and I spoke back to him in my mind and I said please Please understand why I have to do this. I have been from time to time covering wars. I'm not a war journalist, but I've seen a few of them. And I would go off and I would do films in Hollywood or I would write novels and go back to covering wars. And I'd seen people who had continually covered wars and paid a terrible price for it. Some of them, not all of them. And those who, who had problems, they were showing symptoms that later became known as the kind of post-traumatic stress disorder that happens in combat, that happens to all kinds of people, but in this particular group of people, some of them got hit very hard. And my friend and colleague, Dr. Anthony Feinstein, uh, he was the one who sort of pioneered the research into this area. He and I have spoken often, and one night we're sitting there and he was telling me the kind of research that he had seen, and I was telling the stories that I had seen, and we decided the perfect way to express this was in a documentary film. So over the course of the next year, we started on what was going to be a normal, quote unquote, hour-long film for television. And as we, as we were going around the world talking to journalists, stories started emerging that were so powerful and so intense that it became pretty much on its own a feature-length documentary. But it's become obvious over the last 10 years that with the nature of war changing, with the nature of covering war uh, being completely different than it was even 20 years ago, the profession is having problems in terms of journalists coming back and trying to cope with normal everyday life back home. So these people were telling us stories not for their own good, but to try and get across what happens. And in each case there was a, either an event or a string of continual events, war after war after war, that they were paying a price for. And with some it was uh, incredible nightmares which one of the people who, who was on the film, a guy named Chris Hedges, he's a former New York Times correspondent, he calls not nightmares but a revisitation of trauma. Everyone becomes infected. Nobody becomes immune, no matter what your motives are. I became as twisted as everyone around me. Our soldiers and Marines call it a combat high. It is possible, and I think was true in my case, to hate war, hate what it did, and yet be utterly uh, bound to the experience. In every case, we found ourselves talking to people who were having problems because of their humanity in some ways. In a lot of cases, they were like what I call flowers growing in concrete. Of all the terrible things they'd seen, it was the fact that they couldn't stop it, uh, that they had seen terrible things happen to people, that they would love to have changed or stopped or made better, and they couldn't do it. Or it was just the constant bombardment of the images, which wore them down, and yet somehow there was a sort, if I can use the word, a constant kindness that showed through.